Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about the formulas and names of molecular compounds. So we're going to learn how to write formulas for molecular compounds and we're also going to learn how to name molecular compounds. So I'd like to start this video off by talking about these two molecules on your screen here, talk, uh, starting with the molecule on the left side of your screen. This is a molecule of dinitrogen monoxide and each molecule of dinitrogen monoxide consists of two nitrogen atoms which are shown here in blue and one oxygen atom which is shown here in red. So that's dinitrogen monoxide. And then the molecule on the right side of your screen is a molecule of nitrogen dioxide. And each molecule of nitrogen dioxide has one nitrogen and two oxygen atoms. So here we can see that we have two different molecular compounds, but they're both composed of the same two elements, nitrogen and oxygen. And this is very different from ionic compounds because uh, oftentimes the uh, formula for an ionic compound can be deduced simply by knowing the compound's constituent elements. The same is not true for molecular compounds because two different nonmetals can actually combine in various proportions uh, to result in many different molecular compounds. So as you can imagine, the way that we name molecular compounds and, uh, is, is going to be quite different from the way that we name ionic compounds. So like I said, with molecular compounds, remember we have two or more nonmetals. And these nonmetals are actually uh, joined together by what we call covalent bonds, which means that the, uh, the atoms are actually sharing electrons with one another. And what results is a collection of these discrete entities that we call molecules. And the molecular compounds that we're going to discuss in this video are binary molecular compounds, which are composed of two different nonmetals. And we're also going to talk about acids. So let's first uh, start by talking about how to name binary molecular compounds. To name any binary molecular compound, what you're going to do is you're going to take the name of your first element and you're going to follow it up with the base name of your second element plus the suffix IDE. And before each of these names, you're going to include a prefix. And what the prefix is going to tell the reader is how many atoms of the element there are in the molecular compound. Now, one question you might be asking yourself is, well, how do I know what the first and second elements are? Uh, when we were doing ionic compounds, it was easy because the metal always came first. But since we have two nonmetals, how do we know which one comes first? Well, the answer is the more metal-like element of the two is going to come first. What do I mean by more metal-like? Well, remember that uh, one of the most important characteristics of metals is their tendency to lose electrons. And one of the most important characteristics of nonmetals is their tendency to gain electrons. So by more, the more metal-like element, I'm talking about the element that is more likely to lose electrons or also uh, less likely to gain electrons. And the periodic table is nice because it's actually arranged so that the more metal-like elements tend to be lower and to the left of the periodic table. So in other words, if you have two nonmetals that are, that are in the same group of the periodic table, the same vertical column, then the lower of the two is going to be the more metal-like element and thus the first element. If two elements are in the same horizontal row, in other words, if they're in the same period of the periodic table, then the leftmost element, that's going to be your first element, okay? So like I said, you, the, you, you include the name of your first element, followed by the, name, uh, the base name of your second element, plus the suffix IDE, and then you have prefixes which tell you how many atoms of each element there are. And those prefixes are as follows. The prefix corresponding to one atom is mono. For two atoms, it is di, three, tri, four, tetra, 5 penta, 6 hexa, 7 hepta, 8 octa, 9 nona, and 10 deca. Uh, there are uh, more for 11 and beyond, but I think uh, just these uh, 10 should be, should be good for now. Anyway, uh, the only exception uh, to this rule is if your first element has only one atom. So if there's only one atom of your first element in your binary molecular compound, then you're not going to use the prefix mono. You're just going to leave the name of that element alone. So in other words, instead of monocarbon monoxide, it would just be carbon monoxide. So let's go through a couple of examples uh, of naming and writing formulas for these uh, molecular compounds. So this, uh, this question uh, is asking us to name N2O4. So how do we name this? Well, uh, we have nitrogen, that's our first element, and we have two nitrogen atoms, that's what this subscript tells us, and the prefix corresponding with two is di, so this is going to be di-nitrogen, 
dinitrogen, and then there are four oxygen atoms. So the prefix for four is tetra, so this is gonna be dinitrogen tetroxide. Remember, with the second element, we have the base name and the suffix IDE. And you might be asking yourself, why is it tetroxide and not tetraoxide? Well, if your second element begins with a vowel, then what we do is we drop the vowel on our prefix. We drop the last vowel on our prefix. So instead of tetraoxide, it's tetroxide. Why do we do this? Um, I'm not really sure, but uh, I guess maybe because it, it just kind of cleans it up and makes it easier to say. Uh, whatever the case, that's, that's how we do it. So let's move on to another example. So this next example is asking us to name PCl5. So how do we name this stuff? Well, we have one phosphorus atom, and remember because this is our first element, we're not gonna use the prefix mono. So instead of monophosphorus, it's just gonna be phosphorus. So this is phosphorus. And then we have five chlorine atoms. The prefix for five is penta. So this is gonna be phosphorus penta chloride. Phosphorus pentachloride. So let's go ahead and do another example. This example actually, what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna write the formula for a molecular compound given its name. So this says to write the formula for tetraphosphorus octasulfide. So tetraphosphorus, that's gonna tell us that there are four phosphorus atoms. So this is P4. And then octasulfide, that's gonna tell us that there are eight sulfur atoms. So this is P4S8. Eight. And let's go ahead and do one more example real quick. And this says to write the formula for dihydrogen monoxide. So dihydrogen, that's going to tell us that there are two hydrogen atoms. So this is H2. And then monoxide, mono is the prefix for one. And that's going to tell us that there are there is one oxygen atom. So this is H2O. And of course, we all know H2O by a different name. But if you wanted to name it systematically, this would be how you would name it. And the funny thing about this is that there are uh, many websites that are uh, petitioning people to ban a substance called dihydrogen monoxide. Um, dihydrogen monoxide sounds like it's sort of uh, deadly or poisonous, sort of like carbon monoxide. Uh, but in reality, in reality, it's just water. So, um, you know, getting people to ban it, it's, it's kind of funny. Uh, I, I know there was a, uh, there was an episode of um, Penn and Teller uh, when they, when they, uh, they, they went up to a bunch of hippies and they asked them, you know, to sign a petition to ban dihydrogen monoxide. And little did they know they were actually signing a petition to ban water. So uh, pretty funny stuff. All right, so let's move on. Uh, now I'd like to talk about acids. And basically what an acid is, an acid is, is it's, it's hydrogen and one or more nonmetals. And one of the main characteristics, one of the most important characteristics of acids is that they produce hydrogen ions, uh, these H plus ions in water. And we're gonna talk about acids in much greater detail later on, but uh, for now, all you really have to know is that they produce hydrogen ions in water. So in this context, they have to have hydrogen in them. So the acids that we're going to learn how to name are binary acids, which are composed of hydrogen and one other nonmetal. And we're also going to learn how to name oxy acids, which are uh, acids that are, in, uh, that are composed of hydrogen and uh, a polyatomic ion uh, containing oxygen. So let's first talk about naming binary acids. To name any binary acid, what you're going to do is you're going to include the prefix hydro, and then you're gonna have the base name of your nonmetal plus the suffix ic, and then acid. So in all, in all of these cases, in no, no matter what binary acid you have, you're always gonna have hydro, and then ic, and then the word acid. The only thing that's gonna be different is the base name of your nonmetal. So let's do a couple of examples of naming some binary acids, shall we? So this tells us to name HCl. So again, we're going to have hydro, and we're going to have ic, and then we're going to have the word acid. The only thing that's different is, like I said, the base name of that nonmetal. So this is going to be hydrochloric acid. 
Okay, so let's move on to another example. HBR, how do we name that? Again, it's going to be the same no matter what. This hydro and then ic and then acid, that's, that's always going to be the same. So, this, so let's go ahead and write that down. Hydro and then ic and then acid. The base name of our nonmetal would be brome because this is bromine. So this is hydrobromic acid. So let's move on to one more example. HI. So again, I know this sounds repetitive, but hydro, ic, acid. And since we have iodine, this is going to be hydroiodic acid. Hydro iodic acid. Notice that in all of these cases, the hydro, the ic, and the acid, all that's that's common to all of these cases. The only thing that's different is the base name of that nonmetal, which is shown here in red. All right, so uh, now we're going to talk about how to name oxy acids. And like I said, an oxy acid consists of hydrogen and a polyatomic anion containing oxygen. Poly, uh, polyatomic ions containing oxygen, these are called oxyanions. And depending on the, uh, the suffix of your oxyanion, you're going to name them differently depending on what the suffix of your oxyanion is. And if your oxyanion ends with the suffix eight, that's A-T-E, then the way that you're going to name them is the following. You're going to have the base name of your oxy, oxyanion plus the suffix ic, and then you're going to tack on the word acid. So that's if your oxyanion ends with eight, you're gonna use ic and then acid. Uh, if your oxyanion ends with the suffix it, which is I-T-E, then you're gonna take the base name of your oxyanion plus the suffix us, O-U-S, and then you're also gonna tack on the word acid. So if, it's, if it ends in eight, you're gonna use ic, and if it ends in it, you're gonna use us, and then in both cases, you're gonna tack on the word acid. So I think uh, one you know, sort of mnemonic that students tend to use is they tend to just jumble the suffixes together and they just say one word which is adagitis. I don't know, for me that was pretty easy to remember, just adagitis. It kind of sounds like some disease or something like, oh, I came down with adagitis so I couldn't go to my chemistry class today. But anyway, however you have to remember these things, um, just you know, go, go, go ahead and do whatever works for you. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do some examples with naming and writing some formulas for oxy acids. So our first example tells us to name this oxy acid. This is H2SO4. And to be able to name this, you have to have a basic knowledge of polyatomic uh, ions. You have to know uh, several polyatomic ions. You have to know their names and you have to know their formulas. You have to know their charges as well. Otherwise, you won't be able to name these acids. So the polyatomic ion, the, the oxy anion that, you're, that we're working with in this case is the sulfate ion, which is SO4 2 minus. This is called the sulfate ion. And since our oxy anion ends in the word 8, we're going to end up using uh, we're going to end up using the suffix ic. So we would call this sulfuric acid. Sulfur ic acid. Remember, because eight goes with ic. So let's go ahead and do another example real quick. This one says to name HNO2, okay? So in this case, we have the NO2 minus ion. This is the NO2 minus ion. And this is called the nitrite ion nitrite ion and notice that our oxy anion ends with it so we're going to end up using us the ous suffix uh, on our acid so this is called nitrous acid Remember, it goes with ic, and then it goes with us, nitrous acid. Let's do another one. Uh, this is telling us to write the formula for chlorous acid. 
So the us, that tips us off that we're going to be using the chlorite anion. And just from memory, you have to know that the chlorite anion is ClO2 minus. So this is ClO2 minus. That's the, uh, that's the chlorite ion. I'll just go ahead and write it. The chlorite ion. So the formula for our acid then is going to be HClO2. By the way, for every uh, negative charge you have, you need one hydrogen because because we're talking about H plus ions here. Each uh, hydrogen atom is going to neutralize one of those negative charges. So in the case of your sulfate ion, since your sulfate ion had a negative two charge, you need two hydrogens to balance that out. And since our chloride ion in this case has uh, one negative charge, we only need one hydrogen to balance that out. So again, us goes with it, and that tipped us, that tipped us off that we have the chloride ion, which is the ClO2 minus, so then our formula is HClO2. So let's do one more example. This formula tells us to, or excuse me, this problem tells us to write the formula for nitric acid. So again, we have that ick that tells us that we're going to use the oxy, oxy anion that ends with eight. And the oxy anion ending with eight in this case would be the nitrate ion. And the nitrate ion is one of those very common uh, polyatomic ions. You should have it memorized by now. And the formula for ni the nitrate ion is NO3 minus. So that is the nitrate ion nitrate ion. So our formula for the uh, nitric acid then, since we have one negative charge here, we're only going to need one hydrogen. So it's going to be HNO3. So you should be comfortable going back and forth between names and formulas uh, for these acids and uh, also for the, uh, the binary molecular compounds that we discussed earlier. All right, so I hope this video helped you guys out a little bit, and I know it can be kind of confusing, especially with these acids. Again, you have to uh, you have to memorize your polyatomic ions. Um, oh, one more thing I'd like to add is that you know just just because we uh, just because we name them uh, based on the oxy anions, that does not mean that these compounds are ionic compounds. Remember, ionic compounds have cations and anions, and they're held together by ionic bonds in a three-dimensional repeating lattice. These are not that way at all. These are actually molecular compounds. They're linked together by covalent bonds. And the way that we name them sort of gives us the you know, notion that they're ionic, but they're really not ionic compounds. They're molecular compounds. So uh, just keep that in mind. And um, all right, you guys take it easy now.